And that leads us to the fourth scene in regard to what will happen uh, at this meeting at the Temple of Virtue, high noon. Officers are assembling, probably three or 400 of them in the room. Gates is in the chair. He's calling the meeting to order at high noon and their horses hoofs right, riding outside, coming up. And I think actually, in case you wanted to know this, I think Washington was riding his favorite horse called Nelson that particular day. Now that's a detail most people don't get, all right? I don't know whether it was, I don't have any, but I know one of his horses was named Nelson, so I just threw it in. Anyway, Washington will come in a back door, and there he is, the man, and as you know, the man, he is large for his time, 6'2", 6'3", broad-shouldered, even though he's showing age, there's no doubt about that. He's graying out, and he simply says, uh, General, would you mind if I just say a few words? What are you going to do if your Gates say, no, thank you? I'm now the commander-in-chief. Well, Gates is in a trap. And so Washington will come forward, and he gives a rather long talk, which is printed. You can get copies of it. Uh, it is pretty uh, commonly distributed. And just to give you some quotes, he called upon his officers, and I'm quoting, to express your utmost horror and detestation of the men who wish, under any specious pretenses, to overturn the liberties of our country, and who wickedly attempts to open the floodgates of civil discord and deluge our rising empire in blood. Washington say, you take the army out, we're going to have a little fight on our hands, I think. And he talks. And he talks, it's a prepared speech. And he looks out over the room and he sees anger and frustration on the faces of his officers. And so he's, and Washington, by the way, was not a great public speaker. So he's sort of thinking to himself, what can I do? And so he, he will do this. I didn't put my glasses in the right, but I just put them down. He reached, reached in his pocket and he said, um, I have a letter here from my good friend Joseph Jones in the Continental Congress and he wants to share some thoughts with you. And there's no reaction. And he says, well, just excuse me for a second and he will pull spectacles, readers, out of his pocket. And he will put those spectacles or those readers on for the first time ever in public. He had just gotten them a month before. He had made arrangements with David Rittenhouse in Philadelphia to have them back in, to, to grind the lenses and so on and so forth back in late 1782. The whole point is he puts on the glasses and the officers are startled. And it's at this point that Washington delivers this incredibly simple but powerfully effective line. Gentlemen, I too have grown gray in the service of my country. Translated, I too have sacrificed and given my all in the service of my country. And I too have grown gray in the service of my country and I too find myself going blind. Translated, I too have aged. I've given the best years of my life. Are we so concerned about our own petty interests, our own pay, our own sense of the civilians not really caring and treating us with respect, that we're going to blow it at the end and give it all away? That we have fought so bravely, we have fought so courageously, and that's what we need to remember. We are where in the temple of virtue where we, those officers and the soldiers, have sacrificed so much that this would be the worst time of all, to let it all go down the drain. At that moment, according to the records that exist, what will happen is the, the tenor in the room will begin to change. Gates is sort of hiding himself and Washington begins to seize control. And he will say, thank you, gentlemen, and uh, I hope you 
will take my thoughts into consideration and he will leave the room and ride away. Amazingly enough, uh, Horatio Gates doesn't know what to do. He's sort of speechless and his uh, friends like Armstrong aren't sure what to do. But Washington, he's a good planner, cool guy. He's made arrangements and Henry Knox, the guy who wrote the petition, will stand up and say, we need to follow the lead of our commander. We need to pass resolutions honoring what we have accomplished and what we have done. Let us be proud. Let us not be selfish. Let us pass on to the ages what we have been so willing to give, at least up until this point. The situation will immediately settle itself. One historian called this the most critical moment in American history, a Washington biographer. And critical moment, I believe, as a historian, it really was.